I was emotional, I was sick, and just literally just crazy, just so full of toxicity. And so I'm extremely weak, I'm not urinating anymore. Everything gets processed through your kidneys. When your kidneys aren't working, nothing's happening. I was hard. I was hard to watch my wife go through that. Because there were times where she couldn't just a spoonful of food. She would throw that up. And I was just literally watching my wife just wither away. Whereas most couples spend their first year getting used to living together, the Hudson's first year was spent dealing with Raquel's autoimmune disease, known as lupus. As the years would go by, lupus would turn into kidney failure, which in turn would become a failing heart. This is the story of how one young couple renewed their mind in the Word through Andrew's teachings and stood against every attack of the enemy. This is the healing journey of Raquel Hudson. So they put me on hemodialysis. It was because my kidneys were shutting down. What it essentially was for me and what it looked like for me was that all these markings here are where they would stick me with the needles. They would pluck me with the needles and they'd stick a needle in here and this would take the, the, the blood out of my body and go through the machine. The machine would clean it and would come back in through here. But this was my life for six, seven years. Man, we didn't know just what we were about to, what we were about to enter into. After trying a cleanse to rid her body of toxins, Raquel broke out in lesions across her entire face. Wanting to help his wife remember her identity in Christ, Herman covered up and posted scriptures on all the mirrors in their house. When you're going through something like that, it is really about yourself. It's about you. It's traumatic for you. And to have a husband who's going to come alongside and say, no, I see you as God sees you, and you're going to have to see you as God sees you. My wife is beautiful on the inside and on the outside. And while she was going through all these different physical changes, you know, the devil was busy. It was when he would go to work a lot of times that I would find myself incapacitated, couldn't move, just kind of on the couch. And I would begin to reflect. And there were times that, yes, I did in fact think to myself, is he going to leave me? I could be at Chipotle or any sandwich place or something. And, and I'm just sitting down having a sandwich. And I, I'd see a young lady eating a sandwich. And the thought would just run by my mind like, man, wouldn't it be nice to be with her? She could eat a sandwich. But I knew enough to know that life is going to be one up here. And I knew that I could not afford to allow one thought to go unanswered. Every time I heard just that temptation cross my mind or that thought go through my mind, I spoke, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And I spoke that a thousand times. I don't know how many times I said it. And you know what? It preserved me. Of course, this wasn't their only issue. Because Raquel's immune system was so weak, her body couldn't fight off infection, and she ended up with one of the worst cases of shingles doctors had ever seen, as well as a cold sore that took over her entire mouth. Raquel also began to have hip trouble, a side effect from years of steroids eating away at her bones. This would only lead to more problems as Raquel's heart began to fail. Even if she, uh you know, wanted to get a hip replacement. She couldn't because her heart wasn't strong enough. If there was a, a kidney transplant, she couldn't because her heart wasn't strong enough. So now the doctors are talking about my 30-year-old wife having a heart transplant. Here we are still not having answers, still not knowing what to do, still believing that, you know, the doctors are trying to help, but they're failing miserably and we just didn't know what to do either. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that folks... Herman had started watching Andrew Womack, and what happened was my dad had started taking notice of him and listening to him. He told my mother, my mother told me, and I told Herman. Herman wasn't all that thrilled about listening to Andrew in the very beginning. I thought Andrew was like a Mormon or something like that, and I was like, he, he doesn't have anything that I need to listen to, and you know, it's, it's so funny looking back at that moment because I had no idea 
that my answers were coming out of this guy's mouth. Instead of begging God to please do something, you would say, thank you, Father, that you've done it. And now, Satan, I command you to get off my body, to get off my finances, to get off my relationships. And you would start releasing this power. And I remember the first time watching his show, and I couldn't stop. I mean, I went online, and I was just watching program after program. And it was like all these little things, these little questions, it just seemed like all the dots were being connected. While I was online, you know, I was watching actually some of the Healing Journey videos, and there was one that really stood out, and it was about Nikki Ochinsky. And man, to see what she was going through, some of those things were exactly what my wife was going through. And I was like, if she can do it, we can do it. We didn't realize it, but things were shifting in our lives. We may not have seen it just from any kind of manifestation in her physical body, but the shit turned. Wanting to get his wife into an environment of faith, Herman and Raquel made the move to Colorado, where they began classes at Karis Bible College. You know, when Andrew talks about effortless change, the word was effortlessly changing our situation. But it was a journey. Everything didn't quite work out cookie cutter like you would like to think when you when you follow what the Lord is, is telling you to do. But we knew we were receiving life. But at the end of that semester, we just couldn't do it. She was back and forth to the hospital even while we were in school. And we just had to stop. We had to take a break. But we never took a break from the revelation that God had already paid the price for her healing. We stayed close to the life. We stayed close to the truth. And even though we, were, we weren't in school or anything, we were always plugged in, in in some capacity. People ask me sometimes, you know, well, was it just this moment? Was it just this miraculous, you know, what was the moment that everything changed? Well, you know what, for us, it was an effortless change. Just because you begin to start hearing something, it's not like necessarily everything has been uprooted or has been changed in your thinking. During this process of renewing her mind, Raquel visited a cardiologist who explained that her heart was failing due to her not eating for years. Ready to put action to her faith, Raquel stood on the teachings of You've Already Got It and began acting as though she was already healed. And I just decided, I just said, Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm gonna eat. Now that my wife hasn't had anything really to eat in eight, nine years, but she started consistently eating for three straight months. I went back to see the doctor three months later and he was astounded. And he runs his tests and her heart is healed. Her heart is normal. And he said, what happened? And I said, God healed my heart. And he said, well, I cannot disagree with you because what I gave you, I know I didn't have anything to do with it. What I gave you did not accomplish this result. Raquel's heart was healed, and after years of dialysis treatments, she was now ready to receive her new kidney and had one of the most successful transplants doctors had ever seen. Today, Raquel is completely healed, and together, they share their testimony as young adult pastors of Karis Christian Center, where they teach young people how to effectively stand against the attacks of the enemy. We were under attack, and there's so many relationships that would have fizzled out and burned a long time ago, and here, here we were in the midst of this thing, still growing in love with each other. We're able to touch others. We're able to be an example to others. We're able to let our light shine, all because of what we learned here at Karis Bible College. What started out as a desperate journey to find hope had its finish as both Herman and Raquel graduated Karis Bible College together with the class of 2017. Raquel and... It means so much to me to see my daughter graduate today. She's been through so much, but God has brought her through. That's why she sings every praise unto our God. And years ago, the doctors told us that she would not live through the night, but God, but God and His Word. So where are we going from now? We're just holding on just with anticipation to see what He's going to do next. Getting a revelation of these foundational truths affects every area of your life. It's not just one particular thing. And every area in our life has been turned right side up. I don't even recall those moments when we were up late at night and, and crying and carrying her to the bed. And from 
her health to our finances. I mean, every aspect of our lives has been nothing but phenomenal since we came out here and sat under these revelations that Andrew's been talking about since the 70s. As partners with Andrew Womack Ministries, you are a part of transforming lives like Raquel's through the free teachings you make available. It is because of your partnership that Raquel is living her life strong and more free than ever before. I'm really alive because of your partnership, because of you coming alongside Andrew and helping him to get this message of the gospel of grace out. All I can say is thank you to him. I mean, you saved our lives. We don't have to strive and strain to get something to produce. The Word is the incorruptible seed. And the thing is, it can't fail. So if you just plant that Word in your heart, it's going to grow. He's already done it.